to see I was ready on the ball then. I couldn't find the mic. <laughs> Good to see you all with us this morning. It really is, you know. Um, there's a few away, but we're going to make up for the people that are away because they've got the lurgy and, and not feeling 100%. So remember these people in prayer. You look around, you can see who they are, yeah? A couple of announcements for this coming week. We all picked up the uh, prayer walk the other, the other week. We start tomorrow with a week of prayer. Seven o'clock every night, this, the building will be open. If you're led, please come. Spend an hour or so in prayer with us, and, and we're going to see a breakthrough in this area. We're going to see a breakthrough in Blinder Gwent, yeah? We're going to see a massive change. I really believe this. We're going to see a massive change in all things by the end of the week. And that change could start with you. You know, I was thinking this morning as I was coming in, I don't know whether you know the uh, railway tunnel uh, by the Ruby Club is open again. But I'm in such an habit of coming through the town, come up from the posh end of Ebervale, as you know. And, and as you come through the town, uh, it's, it's busy. But I'm in the habit of doing that. This week I want to break that habit because it's quicker going through the tunnel. Habit breaking. This week as you're praying, praying for breakthrough, ask if you need to change any break habits that you've got. Habits in your attitude. And I'm, it isn't, it's me as well. A bit in your thinking, in your attitude, in the in, in all things. Yeah? But this week, seven o'clock every week, we're going to open the building for prayer. So we're going to open in prayer now. Please be be free in worship. We're, we're here to to worship God. The guys are going to lead us in uh, in worship after prayer, and we're going to take up the offering. And Brian and Teddy will come round with the the offering bags now. Our God and our Father, we just thank you, we just praise you for, for this opportunity be, of being in your presence, for this opportunity of being able to worship you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you've done in the last week. And Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do in the coming week. Lord, we believe that you are going to pull down walls, you are going to open ways, you are going to make room to move in this place, in this town. Lord, I pray that in all that we do this morning, you will be the center. And Lord, I pray that as we leave this building later on, this, later on this morning, Lord, I pray that we will be energized to glorify and worship and testify of how good you are throughout this week. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, be amongst us. Amen. Praise his name. Great sense of God's presence amongst you this morning. It's always encouraging when God's here and God's moving in the way that He does. God doesn't come to entertain, God comes to minister. God doesn't come just to pat us on the back and make us feel good, God comes to soothe, to heal to mend broken hearts to change lives and every time we come to this part of the service when we break bread let's not miss that point this is the point that Jesus died on a cross and in his dying God giving his life he released so much power so much power to change there are no excuses though we like to give ourselves excuses there are no get out of jail free cards oh well I've got this problem so I can't change oh I've got this issue in my life I, I can't change oh I, I come from a challenging home background I can't change do you know what God changes everything the only reason I stand here this morning able to share this bread and cup with you is that God changes everything. There is no power that is higher, no authority that is greater, no one's name who has more authority than the name of Jesus. And in his name, we are free. So if you take your emblems this morning, 
This is an act of remembrance, an act of faith. Because I've received from the Lord that which he also delivers to you. So the Lord Jesus, on the very same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he'd given thanks, thank you, Father, that I get to go through suffering for you. In our human minds, that's too much, isn't it? But Jesus got it. Kingdom of heaven stuff. This is my body. Broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he took a cup, saying this cup is the new arrangement. The word translates covenant. That means the new binding agreement between heaven and earth. This is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Because as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Lord bless you. Delighted this morning to have Pastor Michelle Warren from the Lighthouse Fellowship with us, and um, she's going to come and share now. She can tell you a little bit about Lighthouse Fellowship and then share the word with us this morning. Thank you, Michelle. Hello. <laughs> I'm going to say Jambo, Jambo, because I'm off to Kenya soon. So, bonus if you <laughs> I'm really excited. I, I'm, uh, my name is Michelle Warren. I run a ministry called Lighthouse of God Ministries. And um, so, it's exciting to be here. Thank you for inviting me. So, I'm really excited. So, I wanted to share a little bit about Lighthouse to start with, what I do. Um, so, I've been running Lighthouse 20 years, or 23 years, and uh, Lighthouse of God Ministries. And it's twofold. On, on one side, I um, run a cafe-style church. It's out-of-the-box thinking church um, in Aberdeen. And I support people more one-to-one -one pastorally and from there evangelizing as well. So it's a cafe-style uh, church inside a shop, inside my charity shop. So, um, and from there, um, lots of exciting things are happening. We're seeing people saved, seeing people being healed. Uh, and lots, lots going on. And also, uh, then I also support 600 children aged 2 to 14 in a thing called Gibraltar. I don't like calling it a slum because people live there. Um, but it's, it's harsh, harsh, harsh slum. And I've been supporting little ones there for the last, uh, like, quite a few years, 20 years over. Um, so we now have 600 children. We started with 20 and uh, now we've got 600, and I expect I'll have more by the time I get back, <laughs> for when I get back, so yeah. But I want to speak to you today on destiny, on how to reach your destiny. And um, so that's what I'm doing today. If we can turn to uh, Genesis 22, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. And I know you know the scripture, but I'm coming from it from a different angle. So it's about Abraham. Uh, so Genesis 22. Now after these things, God tested the faith and commitment of Abraham and said to Abraham, and he answered, here I am. Oh, faith. Tested. Oh, we don't like that, do we? Like, oh, our faith will be tested. Every time I go on the mission field, my faith is tested. Every time God asks me to do something, my faith is tested. They get all Oh, and then um, God says, now take your son, your only son of promise, who you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains on which I shall tell you. Oh, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? Gosh, gosh, my only son, I've got to take him, take him and offer him as a sacrifice. Whoa, my son, my flesh, my, my everything. 
my everything. Yeah. And then, um, so what did Abraham do? Did he go, sh- go to his wife and say, oh, we've got a problem. God wants to give my son as an, uh, God wants me to take our only son and kill him as an offering. Did he go to his wife? Doesn't say, does it? Did he go to his friends and ring all his friends up at that time and say, oh, oh, I've got a problem, I've got a problem. Did he go on the network? <laughs> oh, God's asked me to do this. Oh, that can't be from God, can it? That can't be from God. God wouldn't ask me to do that. No, I've heard wrong. No, that's fine. I don't need to do that. I've heard it wrong, haven't I? Did he do that? No, 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 no. He said, so Abraham got up early in the morning, saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac, split the wood of the burnt offering and then he got up and went to the place on which God had told him. On the third day of travel, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance and Abraham said to his servants, I like this bit, settle down and stay here with the donkey. The young man and I will go over there and worship God and we will come back. We will come back. What's he doing there? He's proclaiming his faith. We are going to come back. Not I, we. And he speaks it out. And and sometimes by faith, we have to speak out the opposite of what is going on in our lives. We have to speak it out. Yeah, speak it out. Oh, I'm sick. You know, in my life, I've had three cancers. Three cancers, not just one cancer. I've had three cancers. I've also then had a major car accident, smashed up my legs. I then had another two life-threatening conditions as an adult recently as well. And, and, but I'm still here. I'm still here and I'm still listening to God and I'm still doing what he wants me to do. But it's hard. I'm not, things that God tells us to do and tests us and asks us to do are not easy. And we can make excuse after excuse after excuse of why we shouldn't do these things. When God just says, go across to the person over there and tell them I love them. Go over to make a casserole for that lady over there and tell her that I love her. Go and tell tell the person over there on the street that Jesus loves me. You know, it's little things. It doesn't have to be as big things as me. What I'm doing with the children. But it's little things that God wants us to do. Yeah? And... And you know the rest of the story where, where um, you know, Abraham built the altar, put his, put his son on there and w- was just about, you know, to go through with it. And then God provided, didn't he, for him? God provided. But this bit is the main bit where I'm coming from today. It says that, this is, this is, this is major The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from the heaven a second time and said, by myself on the basis of who I am, I have sworn an oath, declares the Lord, that since you have done this thing, I have not withhold me from me, your son, your only son of promise. Indeed, I will greatly bless you. I will greatly bless you your descendants like the stars of the heavens and the sand of the seashore and the seed that possess the gates of the enemy as conquerors through your seed all the nations on the earth shall be blessed because you have heard and obeyed my voice you have heard and obeyed my voice have you ever thought what would happen if Abraham hadn't have done that if he had turned around and said, oh, that can't be from God. What would have happened if Abraham hadn't heard to start with? You know, faith, we have to start hearing God for ourselves first. And then from there, we can then obey. But we can't obey unless we're hearing. Yeah? So don't we as Christians want to obey God and want to please God and please our Heavenly Father? Well, to do that, we need to hear him, don't we? And to do that, we need to spend God with, spend time with God. That's a whole, whole day's teaching, isn't it, on how to spend time with God so that we can hear him. But hearing him is important. What did Jonah do when Jonah heard from God? God said, go to Nineveh. <laughs> go to Nineveh. What did, what did Jonah do? He legged it. <laughs> he legged it the other way. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> this, is, uh, this isn't for me. I can't do this. I'm making an excuse up here. I can't do that. Who I can't do that. Why should I go? Gosh, I can, 
I'm going to, you know, I could get killed doing that. It's, it's a big mission, that is. I can't do that. It's too big for me. God says, go. He left it. But you see, God gives us always a second chance. Even if it's from the, the belly of a well, he still comes back and says, go. Yeah, he gives us second chances. Yeah. I don't believe um, that I, my destiny, because we're talking about destiny today, if I hadn't have gone on my first mission as a Christian, that was to Brazil, to Sao Paulo, I was in a church called um, Kenston Temple in London, and the first mission I ever went on was to Brazil. I was only one year old in the Lord, and uh, the, 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 the um, church were going on this mission, all the pastors were going, and they were ch choosing two people from the congregation. And I applied um, by faith because I thought, well, what can I do? I'm only a year old Christian. What can I do? I don't have any of these gifts. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a leader. What can I do? And I thought, ah, oh, I know what I can do. I have the gifts of helps. I can carry their water. Whoops. I, I can carry their water. I can carry their papers. I can carry their Bibles. I can help them. Yeah? That's what I thought I was going to do. Yeah? And as I went there and helped, then God used me, yeah? On the first uh, day we were there, um, lots of people were, were, were being prayed for. And I thought, right, I can help, help by catching people. Because when the Holy Spirit gently falls on people, the people just gently fall to the floor. Uh, the love and compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ just touches people. And I thought, I just want to just catch these people and help. As we got to the top of the stairs, because there were so many people wanting prayer, uh, we were in pairs. Um, the person I was paired up, the pastor I was paired up with, disappeared. I'd never prayed for anybody before, <laughs> and he's gone. And I'm like, and I've got, I've got my Brazilian badge on, I'm part of the team, and there's three people at the top of the stairs who still need prayer for, and I'm like, oh, oh dear, I, I don't know how to do this. I've never done this before. And I thought, I know what I can do. I can copy what the other pastors do. So I went, I went over and I said, nobody's looking. I be filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Don't they, they do that, don't they? And all three of them fell on the floor with the power of the Holy Spirit. I start jumping up and down going, thank you, Jesus, for using me. Thank you, Jesus, for using me. See, when Jesus uses you, you get full of joy. Come on, you don't want to miss this joy. Because when God uses you and you go over there and you tell somebody Jesus loves you, whoa, that fills you with joy because you're doing work for the Lord. Yes? And so I was looking around going, okay, nobody saw that. I was fine. And then the, the pastor came back and I was going, oh, no, I'm in trouble. Oh, no. And, and, and he said, he said, Michelle? I said, okay, yes, yeah, I know. He said, no, carry on doing that for the rest of your life. Carry on doing that for the rest of your life. Yeah? And then I carried on doing that. Now, um, I've, um, I also, um, three quarters of the way through the mission, I, I became very sick. And um, I, I missed out. Uh, I was going to be missing out on an evening service. I was on the floor. I was dehydrated. I was really quite poorly. And I said to the lady I was sharing with the room, and I said, I don't think I can go to the next meeting. She goes, well, I, I'll go and get ready. You stay here, and then we'll see. As she went into the bathroom, I, the God, God, God came into the room. And it was an amazing experience where I saw God's light come in from the corner. And as it came in, the light of God just filled the whole place up from wall to wall to wall in a light, a beautiful light I've never seen before. And I heard the audible voice of God. And God said, Michelle. I was more shocked that God knew my name. <laughs> you know, who am I? I'm just here to serve you, Lord. I, 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 who am I? And I'm like, okay, Lord, you, yes, yes. You just say yes, yes. Because that's what, <laughs> yes, Lord, yes, holy God. Uh, and God said, tonight I want you to go into the balcony and I want you to pray for the people in the balcony. I was like, um, but I'm sick, Lord. Here comes all the excuses again. I'm on the floor, Lord. I'm, I'm on sick, Lord. I can't even get up, Lord. I'm ill, Lord. I can't possibly do that. God just leaves the room. And then I le left there going, God comes and speaks to me and I blow it. 
I blow it. God comes and speaks to me. And what do I do? I make excuses. I am so sorry, Jesus. I'm so sorry. So sorry, Heavenly Father. And then I make myself get up. I'm crawling on my hands and knees, getting myself ready. I crawl to the, to the left uh, with my friend. She helps me into the lift, get to the next prayer meeting. I sit there, pretend I'm fine. And, and then she half carries me to, to into the, the bus. And everyone thinks I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. It doesn't matter because they don't know I'm ill. So then we get to the event. and I'm, I'm sat there and I'm really sick still. And the Lord says, stand up and praise and worship my name. And as I stood up and praised, worshipped the name, I instantly healed. Instantly. Brilliant. We can make excuse after excuse after excuse why I can't go and talk to that person in town, why I can't forgive that person, why I can't do this. But God is saying, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. All things. Okay? And another thing is, uh, when we went to Brazil, I saw street children and orphans, little kiddies, babies, orphans, children little ones on, on the streets, living on the streets. And I've never seen babies on the streets before, just abandoned and left. I've never seen children on the streets abandoned and left. I've never seen anything like that. Obviously, I've seen the homeless adults, but not little, little ones, little, 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 little ones. And, and it broke my heart. And on the day off, on my day off, I went to see the children's work they did with the church. And they took a coach out and got the children safely on the coach. Um, because bad things were happening to them and um, it broke my heart uh, and from there I had a passion not just for the Holy Spirit but a passion for those children and street children and God started stirring my heart and I just want to say if I hadn't heard God to tell me to go to Brazil and I had not obeyed God to tell me to go to Brazil my destiny would have been different to what my destiny is now you know I may have caught up later on but the the difference of those 20 years of how many thousands of children God has used me by his grace entirely because I don't have any money God br brings the money in through donations to help these children I look after now at the House of God Ministries but thousands and thousands of children now have been helped through what God put in my heart as a passion then so what is your passion? What is your passion? Is your passion music? Is it homeless? Is it, what's your passion? Stir up your passion. What's your passion? Yeah, God put that into my heart. It's not the easiest of passions to have children and slums. I work in slums. I don't work in, all well, my friends who are missionaries, they work in really nice places. <laughs> I work in a slum with raw sewage up to here with these children who have absolutely nothing, who are sleeping on a, on a mud floor and a potato sack in a sh shack that we wouldn't even put a pig in in this country. These children, these children, that's what God's put a passion inside of me. What has God put a passion inside of you for? Stir up that gift, stir up that passion. It is so important. There's another time, the next mission I went on afterwards was to Albania. And everybody, all the pastors in the church said to me, Michelle, no, no, no. Drive a lorry, the Lord said to me. Drive a lorry to Albania. Me, drive a lorry to Albania. I forgot to add that three months before that, that was when I had my car accident and smashed up my legs. And then God wants me to get into a lorry. I wouldn't even overtake a lorry. Never mind get in a lorry and, and drive it to Albania. I, me? You know, I'm a woman. <laughs> Women don't, at that time, didn't drive lorries. You know, I'm, you know, who am I to drive a lorry? I'd smashed up my legs. But God wants us to overcome our fears. Because God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So, yeah, we can make excuses that we're sick. And as I said, all the cancers I've had, all the stuff I've had, that's... You know, I still go into Kenya in three weeks. I can sometimes w not walk, but God's, I'm still going by faith to help the street children out there and the orphans. But fear, every mission or everything that God tells me to do, I'm being honest, fear comes on me. And you have to deal with that fear. Every time God talks to you, you're going, oh, oh. But we have to deal with that fear to overcome, to do what the Lord wants us to do, to serve him effectively. Are you serving God effectively? Yeah, your passion. You have to serve God effectively. So in Albania, um, 
you know, if I hadn't of again done that mission, God told me to take a lorry full, full of humanitarian aid to, and not to a, 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 a the Turina, Turana, uh, it's the capital of Albania, not to there. He wanted me to take it to Latch, which is away from the capital. And I didn't know why he didn't want me to take it to Turana, but he wanted me to take it there. But on every mission that you go on, there will always be people telling you, you can't do that. You're not able to do that. You're rubbish. You're, you're, you, you can't do that. You know, and I've had that all the way along, even pastors saying, nope, you can't do that mission, Michelle. I found out when I got back from that mission that those two pastors individually who told me I couldn't do it were the two pastors that God actually, they omitted. God actually asked them to do it individually. They didn't do it. And then God raised up a woman. So come on, men. Rise yourself up yeah. because you've got work to do. Amen. If you want to have a go as women for doing it, we'll rise up. Yeah. Rise up. And women too. We need to all rise up to serve God effectively. Yeah. yeah. But if, if I hadn't have done that, that three months later again, the guerrillas came into, that, into Albania and they went through all the hospitals. They, 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 they set fire to everything. They took everything. They, they caused haddock right the way through Ab, um, Albania. And the only hospital they didn't touch was the one in Latch. And so that aid was able to help them people. So what I'm saying is Abraham here, if he hadn't have been obedient and heard God, then he wouldn't have been blessed. If he hadn't have done it, his descendants wouldn't have been blessed. If he hadn't heard God and obeyed God, then his generations wouldn't, us generations wouldn't be blessed. So there's a knock-on effect of what we do. Yeah. When I was in Brazil, um, there was a, a child who, who w couldn't see and couldn't hear. And, and God graciously led me to pray for that little one. Uh, and they, they, the Lord of compassion and love just touched that child. And that child was able to hear and see for the first time. So it's a knock-on effect. If I hadn't have gone, that child wouldn't have been healed at that time. If I hadn't have gone, the passion uh, that God had put inside of me for my, my future and my destiny wouldn't have wouldn't have happened. Um, also, when I was up in that balcony, when God says to go up in the balcony, I want to tell you what happened. I had doubt again as soon as I got up there. I, I, I had doubts like, no, 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 this is wrong. I, God wouldn't have asked me to do that. No, 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 no. And, and I started to turn away. And as I turned away, I saw through God's eyes just for a second saw through his eyes those people individually all their hurts all their all their all, all the needs all, all, all of them individually I saw from I was up in the back and I could just turned and saw 500 people like completely how God sees people seeing their hurts and God put a compassion on me and a, a compassion I started to cry with a compassion that God put, because God loves you and he loves, loves everybody. And that compassion, oh my gosh, I just repented and said, sorry, Lord, for not going to speak to them. Sorry, Lord, for turning away. See, there's people out there who need your love, who need to know that Jesus loves them. Yeah, God has a compassion for them. He loves, he loves you. And he says to you, I love you. I have compassion for you. And so I turned around and obeyed. And even though I didn't have a translator, I didn't have any bodyguards. I hadn't told the team downstairs where I was, which I should have done. I, there was a load of re reasons why I shouldn't have been up there. But I just gently said, yes, Lord. And that's what God wants for us. When he tells us to go and do something, he just says, he just wants us to say, yes, Lord. We are humbly and say, yes, Lord, I'm here, Lord. And I started just to gently pray for the people upstairs. And one by one, the whole, well, the whole row of people were touched with God. And they all started to cry. And they all started to receive God's love and compassion on their lives. And by the end of the time I prayed for the whole area, everyone was just receiving God uh, and wanting to know God more and, and having that compassion fall on them, God's love on them. And... and at the end of the service, I, 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 I left with the others, and, but God closed my mouth. I wasn't allowed to tell anybody what I'd done. And in the morning, I went to the morning prayer meeting, and there was a problem. I could tell because the pastors were, were, weren't very, were, were happy, but were, were like something was wrong. You could tell. 
you know, and, and they said, somebody here last night went up into the balcony without permission, and we want to know who it is. And I, I'm sat in my seat, sinking down, going, uh-oh, uh-oh. And the only person who knew was the person who I shared the room with, because I, I, I sort of said to her, I need to go, because God's come into the room and told me to go into the balcony. So she's looking at me, and I'm looking at her. Anyway, Colin died, pastor, he wouldn't leave it. No, nope. he said, I want to know. And slowly I stuck my hand up like this. I'm the year-old Christian there. All the others are pastors. And I'm like, oh, no, oh, no. The others were like, well, how come God's used her? She's a year-old Christian. We've been Christians 50 years. How, God, how, how come God's used her? Yeah. And Colin just gently turned around and said, if God wants to use a donkey, he'll use a donkey. If he wants to use Michelle, he'll use Michelle. If God wants to use a handkerchief with God's anointing on, he'll use a handkerchief. God will use whoever he wants you to use. You don't have to be a leader to go and tell somebody that Jesus loves them. You don't have to be a leader to tell and touch somebody and say you are healed in the name of Jesus. You can just go and touch them. And with your faith, you have the same authority as Jesus. Say, in Jesus' name, be healed. You go, you go and tell them. You don't have to be a leader. And God's grace and compassion and love is real. God's compassion and love is real. Amen. Um, like I said in my life, we, 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 we make excuse after excuse not to go. And I just want to say to you that, you know, life is difficult sometimes. <laughs> But we have to hold on to Jesus. We have to hold on to his love. And he does bring us through. Like I said, with my three cancers, car accident, blah, blah, blah. I, I, yeah. But there's a poem that I've written. And the end verse says, it talks about life. And it says, life is precious. This I now know. As I take my life seriously. And this I hope shows. I have dedicated my time to the God who is in my life. And I will do the best to help the life of others who God puts by my side. What are you doing with your time? And who is God putting by your life? Ask for some divine appointments. Amen.